Whatever. Last time on Chapter 30, we were left on Shufrakin's airship where Valentina, Brooks, and Shufrakin were planning on using Rage as bait to infiltrate the Dragon Watchers. Suddenly, they hear Rage cry out, and Valentina is left between two choices, to protect Rage or to wonder if there was any other way. Both paths lead to interesting truths of the North Farm Frosty royalty, so let's dive in. The option to wonder if there is any other ways lead to Shufrakin convincing Valentina to abandon range as they have always had. Valentina is weighed down with guilt but eventually agrees to abandon range. Range, being hurt in the assault by the dragon, makes a decision to save Sia by risking his own life. He tells Sia that she was the only one to give him hope to live. With that, range thrusts himself outside the airship towards the dragon with Sia screaming after him to stop. In the depths of North Farm Frosty's mountains, Momoring and Ambambe see something falling from the sky and go to investigate. They see Range buried in the snow, and Mbambe starts to lick him. Range wakes up to the stickiness all around him, and Momoring explains that Nambe was doing that to heal Range, and Mbambe had saved Range's life. Range introduces himself, and Momoring becomes excited to have met the descendant of Misty. She tells Ranger's secret that long ago, Misty had come to save the Tories and the Yetis from soldiers that were attacking them and annihilating them. Misty promised to stay near them and to protect them and help them hide away deep in the mountains, but the tribes promised to help Misty stop the evil dragon emperor if he ever came back. Range asked her if she was okay with that, to which Mama Ray explained that she was happy with the life she lived with in Bombay and the rest of her tribe here in the deep in the mountains. While discussing their happy story, a cursed reverend appears and attacks them. The three manage to defeat it just barely, and Range tells Momarin that they must all run. Momarin, on the other hand, says that the hour has come and that she must go back to the village to tell them to join in the fight against the Dragon Emperor. Range asks her to take him back to the village so that he will actually convince them not to fight and to flee instead, and that a little promise from a long time ago should not be the reason for their deaths, and the dragon cannot be defeated. Momori hesitantly agrees to take Range back to the village and the three head towards the depths of the mountains toward this tribe as Range remembers Sia and sadly departs, hoping that she was alright. The path in which Valentina goes to save Range ends up a little differently. Valentina tells Shufrakin that she will not abandon her own kin and runs out to save Range. Shufrakin is angered by Valentina's decision and tells Karina to use Valentina also as bait to buy time for their escape. Valentina arrives to see Range injured and berates him, telling him that he and Sia are both pathetic for being so weak and not trying their best to survive. At that time, Brooks appears and tells Valentina that Shifrakin has ordered her to take the attention of the dragon. Valentina understood that Shifrakin had abandoned her as well due to her choice and makes the decision to do so, telling Range to follow Brooks to the other ship. Valentina asked Brooks if Shufrakin had made any orders regarding Range, to which Brooks said he hasn't and that he probably forgot about Range altogether. Hearing this, Range says that he will stay with Valentina. Valentina realized that Range also knew too that Shufrakin had abandoned both of them. Sia says it's impossible that a father would abandon both his children and use them as bait. Well, Range asked Valentina if they had a chance to win. Valentina just tells Range that all they can do is to survive, and that's all. As the dragon approaches, Valentina and Range become open to each other. Valentina explains to Range that Shufrakin has become cold by being abandoned by his own family his entire life, and now also has his children abandon him. Valentina had hoped that things would change as they gained power and their ability to focus on each other, but it had not. Valentina also sadly acknowledges that she had failed to change both Shufrakin and Range despite all her efforts. As the dragon approaches, Valentina tells Range and Sia to abandon the ship. Range renders that he believes that the dragon is purposely not seeking the airship to make sure that Shufrakin is dead, the dragon not knowing that Shufrakin had already changed airships. With that theory in mind, Range opens up to Valentina too, saying that he does not like her, and oftentimes resented her for making him miserable and always being compared to her. 
But he also mentions that he was wrong and that he was the one running and she was the one that did not give up on him. He states that Valentina was the only one that can change or stop Shufakin and that he has made the decision to take his revenge against him. He tells Sia and Valentina to leave the airship and asks that Sia stays with Valentina until she stops Shufakin. Sia and Rame share their last goodbyes and leave the airship as Rame takes the airship full course into her dragons. <laughs> As the dragons continue to wreak havoc on Exos, what other surprises await? Find out in the next chapter, and if you like random gaming content, especially all mobile gacha games, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to post every weekend. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and take care.